chain. And that is because influenza is spread mainly through contact and droplet transmission. So if you are using your hand as a device to catch a cough or sneeze, then you are then touching, handling other objects, and maybe shaking someone else's hand, and then the inevitable happens that you bring the hand to the face. This is the danger zone right here. I was reading an article last week, and it was saying that there had been a study performed of college students who thought something else was being studied. And they were sitting in a room, and they were being monitored while they were doing the assigned task. And the monitors that were sitting outside and observing them were counting how many times they touched their face. And the answer to the average for the college students in this study was 47 times in the course of two hours they were touching their face. And I want to make it very clear where your most dangerous point of access for influenza is. It is your eyes. So those of you who wear contacts and don't do proper hand hygiene maneuvers prior to manipulating them are putting yourself at great risk. Nose is second, mouth is third. So just be aware of that. And I brought a prop this time to show you proper hand hygiene <laughs> technique <laughs> with GHS property, hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> the volume that you're supposed to use is at least a dime in the palm of your hand. And you begin the rubbing process. You make sure you coat in between the fingers and everywhere. This process is not concluded and complete until your hands are totally dry. It can take, depending on the alcohol content of the hand agent you are using, up to 20 seconds to do an adequate job on this. So I'm not dissing hand washing because hand washing is extremely important, but it's seldom done more than a liquor promise type with uh, people's sense of urgency in getting back to whatever it was that was more important than washing their hands. So it needs to be done with adequate supply of soap, water, and friction, again, getting interlaced and doing that properly. I would be doing a great disservice to this group to have you believe that this is your best protection against influenza because it's not. Your best protection is also involved with your hand in signing a consent to take a flu vaccine. You're to read a vaccine information sheet, and then you fill out the consent, and that is the most important protection. Cameron's passing those out right now so that you can review that. This particular vaccine information sheet discusses protection with the seasonal flu vaccine. This season is extremely challenging because in April 2009, the country started hearing reports of a new swine flu that was migrating from Mexico to California and spreading around the world. This particular strain is an H1N1 strain that is not included in this year's seasonal product. It appeared too late to be incorporated into the recipe that they use every year. So it requires its own special <coughs> vaccine, which will come later. Later may be too late for many of you. So that's why I wanted to address what you can do to protect yourself from that particular strain, which never went away. It surfaced April 2009, never went away over the summer like flu is supposed to do. And it is still circulating. 98% of the A strains that are circulating right now are this H1N1 strain. <clears throat> so in conclusion, I want to make you aware that billions of dollars, decades, of research and development have gone into producing safe and effective vaccines for your consumption. Yet, fewer than 40% of healthcare workers typically take the vaccine, if it weren't for the old folks in our population, flu vaccine wouldn't be a product that would be very heavily uh, accessed. But you all in this cohort here in this room are among the generation that really needs to be aware that our children are significantly at risk. The most extreme outcomes, unfortunate outcomes have happened 
in children under the age of 24. And I say children because they seem like children still. <laughs> and I want you also to know that no one, through any amount of virtue that they possess, or a magical way of thinking about their immune system, that it is somehow so superior that this flu virus cannot attack them is delusional. That, that this is really a, a serious thing, particularly for pregnant women, if you know of any. They need to be in the, the front of every line, taking both seasonal flu vaccine and the H1N1 when it's available. And they have been targeted as a population for healthcare providers to invite to take the vaccine. So I want you all to do a little math exercise with me. I want you to look at the ads in the, <coughs> the drugstores and the grocery stores and see how much a seasonal flu vaccine would cost you if your employer doesn't provide it for you. Typically it's running around $25. I want you to look at your weekly wages and you decide where, what is the best investment for you? Because flu typically knocks you out for five to seven days. It's a very serious illness and it can cause death. So be mindful, be aware, and if you have questions, I'm very approachable. I'd love to talk to you about it.